O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76, and we need to talk about it, especially from a prosecutor's perspective. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. I want to thank you for all your views, your likes, and comments, and let's talk about a polarizing individual, O.J. Simpson. And from a prosecutor's perspective, let me just tell you, uh, the guy murdered two people. He murdered Nicole Brown Simpson. He murdered Ronald Goldman. And the facts of the case are well documented. You don't need me to repeat them here. But I want to go over a few points. First off, the guy not only murdered two people, but he committed over 60 acts of domestic violence against Nicole Brown Simpson, his ex-wife, who he murdered. He also, after being found liable for killing Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman, he fled to Florida and tried to hide his assets. And for the most part, he was pretty successful at it, avoiding the millions of dollars in judgment that he owed the victim's families. And he was able to come down here to Florida, take advantage of our generous bankruptcy laws and other homestead laws and hide assets from the victim's families. And so if you're looking to me to say something nice about O.J. Simpson, came to the wrong place, except I will say that he was a great football player. He was a great, well, he was an entertaining actor, uh, but all that is overshadowed by his vicious acts of murder. And if you want to see how vicious it was, just look at the facts and the blood evidence. There's a lot of forensic evidence. Um, in fact, uh, I was so appalled by O.J. Simpson that when it was rumored that he was going to come down to Florida, I went public and said, don't come to Palm Beach County. And I still uh, stand by that because history will judge him the way it should be judged. And I take no glee in, in his death. I do not celebrate someone dying from cancer. I generally do not try to speak ill of the dead. But it's important when talking about O.J. Simpson that we don't try to gloss over the fact that he was found liable by a jury for killing Ronald Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. Now, people say, well, he was acquitted at trial. Yes, at trial, there were a number of mistakes made by the prosecutors, and I thought the judge, Judge Ito, let in too uh, many bits of extraneous evidence, things that were just more prejudicial than they were probative, and in the end, the jury found that the burden was not reached. I'm not going to argue that right here, but I do think the civil jury had it right. And the civil jury has a different standard. It's preponderance of the evidence. Is it more likely than not that O.J. Simpson did it? And they found that he did it. So it's not just me saying that he's a murderer. That's what a, a civil jury determined. But to find him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, you need a much higher amount of evidence and persuasion. And the prosecutors made at least one crucial mistake in that trial. So there were these gloves that were tied to O.J. Simpson. These fancy gloves that he had purchased at were his gloves. One was found at the property uh, where the murder took place. Another one was found on his property. And when he was asked to try on the gloves at trial, that was a huge mistake. You see, the prosecutors, and apparently Marsha Clark, the lead prosecutor, did not want O.J. Simpson to have to try on the gloves. And the reason is that the gloves had been soaked in blood. And over time, they shrink. You add on to that the fact that O.J. Simpson was wearing latex gloves before he put his hands in the gloves. And so Marsha Clark was like, I, I don't think we should let him try on the gloves. But Chris Darden, the other prosecutor on the case, wanted him to. And apparently, according to reports, F. Lee Bailey or uh, one other member of the defense team goaded Darden to making him try on the gloves. And he did. And that was the end of the case. Because in front of the jury... There's O.J., you know, he's an actor struggling to put on the gloves. And Johnny Cochran came up with that famous line, if the gloves don't fit, you must acquit. He should never have been asked to try on the gloves to begin with. This is part of the things we learn as prosecutors. You never ask a question you don't know the answer to, but especially when you have all these other factors in play, like a blood-soaked glove that was frozen and unfrozen that shrinks over time, and you have the guy who's trying it on with latex gloves underneath, making it harder for the gloves to fit. The prosecutors were so uh, taken aback and on their heels 
at that moment that they called in an expert from the company that made the gloves and they had a new pair of gloves, the same gloves, and they had O.J. Simpson try that pair on. A new pair of gloves that hadn't shrunk over time and that pair of gloves fit him. But the damage was done, the jury saw it, and that's all they needed to hang their hat on, even though there was overwhelming forensic evidence, the DNA, blood evidence, it was all there. But at that time, DNA evidence was still relatively new and juries didn't know what to think of it. And there was the specter of race. One of the things that O.J. Simpson did was to divide our country over race. He, as someone who has never been a, a civil rights icon, never been someone who seemed to care about civil rights, he made race a focal point of his trial. And uh, the jury reflected the fact that the LAPD had a terrible reputation amongst African-American uh, members of the community. They've had some high profile and not so high profile um, mistakes and misdeeds. So you had a jury that was open to the arguments of Johnny Cochran and the blame against the lead investigator, Mark Furman. And a lot of evidence was allowed in about Mark Furman that other judges likely would have kept out. But in the end, the jury acquitted. And then a subsequent civil jury found O.J. Simpson liable, and then later on, O.J. Simpson was found guilty of storming into a hotel room in Las Vegas, ostensibly to take back his memorabilia or things, or uh, what he thought was his memorabilia, but he went in with a group with guns a-blazing, and they got him. And they got him and sent him to, sentenced him to prison for that crime. And you got to believe that perhaps part of that sentence had to do with the knowledge that he had gotten away with one in the past. But O.J. Simpson was then released early, and then he just passed away. So that is the history of, of the O.J. Simpson trial from a prosecutor's perspective. Um, and in fact, as someone here who lives in South Florida, I have saw him twice in the community, once at a charity golf tournament. I guess that's where he went to go find the real killers. You remember? He said that now that he was acquitted, he was going to spend his time and resources searching for the real killers. Yeah, that... Tells you all you need to know about that guy. It was always about himself. It was always about uh, acting. It was faking who he was. And he got away with it, at least partly. But his reputation is forever stained. He did find, uh, did meet justice in two other trials, including one where he did get incarcerated. And that is the legacy of O.J. Simpson. If you like this video, Please like and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN, and I'll see you next time.